Welcome to the Traditional Way Podcast, brought to you by the Martial Arts Center Network. I'm your host, Brett Shumway. Please continue to support our network on social media and on our website at www.mainternetwork.com. Additionally, our shows are a great source of all things going on in the martial arts community, from traditional to open circuits and film. Our network strives to bring you all the up-to-date information going on within our community and around the martial arts. I want to start this show up by wishing all my American viewers a happy Juneteenth to all that celebrate, and I hope that you enjoy the holiday. On this show, we will be celebrating the 2024 grand winners from the Premier League season. For those not familiar with this honor, the Premier League is quite simply the best of the best within the WKF. Each season generally is made up of four events where the top competitors from around the world come to test themselves against the best in their division. The WKF ensures that the Premier League stays uh, the top circuit within their organization by reserving the top spot or the spots available to the top 32 ranked competitors. So those that are on the Premier League have to earn their way onto it. You can't simply just show up and compete. Other than the World Championships, these are the elite events for the organization. Now, just because it's reserved for the top 32 athletes doesn't mean that the lower uh, ranks do not get a chance to compete on the Premier League. Uh, if more or more of the top athletes decide not to show up, then uh, the lower ranked competitors have the opportunity to compete. This does happen often and on a regular basis, and it gives those opportunity to move up in the rankings as they will always put 32 in the round robin format. Uh, what is about in a nutshell is the honor of becoming the grand winner, right? The Premier League determines the grand winner by overall points obtained throughout the annual season. This is the second highest honor that, uh, within the WKF to be a grand winner. And the athletes are granted the right to wear the gold embroidery on their uniforms for, uh, for the next season. Only grand winners and current world champions uh, have the right to wear that gold embroidery, embroidery on, your, on their uniforms. So... If you happen to be out see, on the open circuit and you see a gold embroidered uniform like Arawaza, Takedo, Sharedo, etc., know that they're emulating the honor that they have not earned. And I hope more in the future do not continue to copy it as it's a great honor within the traditional scene. I personally believe this isn't being done intentionally. I, I think that they are simply cop copying what they're seeing and it is out of not understanding what that gold means that they are doing it. I do, however, hope that it does stop on the open circuit, but only only time will tell. And I hope it's something that is, stays reserved strictly for those who earn it. So let's take a look at those who have earned that honor for the upcoming season. This division had some intrigue this year as the reigning grand winner, Yorgala Salazar, had to miss an event due to injury. Heavily favored and being in the final of the three events she did enter, missing the one event was enough to knock her out of the top spot. This year, reigning world champion and world number two ranked Modir Zhangerbe would earn the top spot. She was able to collect a gold, two silvers, and a bronze in the four events and continued to hold her top ranking within the division. Although she already earned her gold uniform by being the current world champion, she ensures that she'll be the only one wearing the gold for the 2025 season in this division. As previously noted during this year, reigning three-time grand winner Angelica Toluga did not perform to her standard this year, and in fact, she dropped out of the Premier League after the second event. This year's honors went to Valentina Toro Manessis of Chile. What's more impressive is that she's only entered three events this season. However, with the top-ranking athletes like Mia Baich, Maria Stoli, and Bella Shemasheva not having great showings in the league this year, Valentina's two golds and bronze medals were more than enough to guarantee her being the grand winner for the year. The division is interesting once again as the reigning grand winner regains her title by only winning a single event. Reem Thomas regains the honor of being the most consistent competitor in the division. In fact, this year was her first Premier League gold medal she has ever won. She has once again became the grand winner due to her constantly standing on the podium at the most of the events. The current world number one started off the season rough with a seventh place, but then gained two bronzes uh, to match uh, her gold and ensure that she retains the grand winner status for another season. This division looked like we were going to crown a new grand winner as reigning grand winner Elena Quercy had an up and down year this year. Uh, as she started off the year with a fifth place finish and also had an early exit in Cairo. However, she did squeeze out two golds this season and that was enough to ensure that she regained the grand winner status, bringing this to a total of three that she has earned in her illustrious career. Although she does not have, uh, she does have some young athletes starting to make their move in the division. She has cemented herself as the one that they will all have to go through if they want to win this division. Uh, 
This year had a surprising end as the, as the one who won more events fell out of the top position. Even though Joanna Kinnear has won two events, uh, where she was eliminated and the other two did not allow her enough points to win the top spot this year. That goes to Maria Torres Garcia, who, who even though she only won one gold, she made three finals this year, making her the most consistent competitor in the division. The gold and two silvers were enough to narrowly beat out Kinnear and claim her first grand winner. The current world number one has been the most active in the division and continues to stand on podiums more times than not. Her consistency is what earns her most of her accolades. With last year's grand winner Hikaru Ono retired, female kata came down to Kiri Mishima, Grace Lau, and Mahu Ono, and the winner would come down to who won the most golds. These three all topped the podium throughout the season, but it was Maho Ono who took two to the others one. She would become the grand winner for this season uh, for the first time. Her two golds, a silver and a bronze, were more than enough to top the division and move herself up into the top five world rankings, setting up for a new rivalry between her and Grace Lau, ensuring yet again another Ono versus Lau rivalry in female kata. This time it will be Maho, not Hikaru, but I feel the intensity of the competition will be the same as it was between the other two moving forward. The results of this division came down to the wire as two athletes tied in the points in the conclusion of the season. Hiromu Hashimoto and Abdullah Shaban tied in the point standings and the grand winner had to be decided by the WKF rules governing this instance. With both athletes having the same amount of gold medals this season with one, the tie was broken by the amount of silvers won where Hashimoto's two this season earns him his second consecutive grand winner status. Those three medals were all that was needed for him to regain the honor, and the world number two will be the one to beat next season in a very heavily contested division. The current world number one, Abdel Amasafa, had the best shot of winning this year. However, he opted to only do two events, so his two golds this season were all for naught when, when you don't show up you don't acquire any points. So the world number two, Syed Obaya, did attend all the events. So his two golds this season, plus the silver he obtained against Al Masafa, was more than enough to secure his first grand winner title of his young career and sets up a great rivalry between the world number one and number two athletes in this division for the next couple of years as they are both still very young. This division was the first one of the season that was completely dominated by one athlete. The current world number one and reigning world champion, Abdallah Abdelaziz, utterly destroyed this division this season, capturing all four golds that were available this year. Each event added to, uh, Christian, each event added to his current seventh event gold medal streak, allowing the young athlete to add to an already impressive medal count within both the Premier League and the WKF as a whole. We are all waiting to see both when his streak will end and who will be the one to uncrown him as he is the favorite to win in this division every time he enters an event. This division was a back and forth amongst the world number one and number two this year with Yusuf Badawi and Muhammad Al-Jafari both winning a gold and a silver against each other. However, it was the other two events that secured the grand winner for Badawi, the first of his career. He was able to also secure a bronze and a fifth place at the other two events, which gave him enough points to take the top honors in the division. I expect that these two will be a fight that goes both ways for a while now in the division, but for now it's Badawi that has the top spot. Last year's grand winner, Rizvan Talibov, came in a distant second in this year's standings as the, as the world number one took the top honors by making every final this year. However, not in the way that you would think. Taha Tariq Mahmood won the first event, and that would be the only gold he would have for the season. He obtained three silvers in the other events, and his consistency would grant him top honors, adding to Egypt's total for the year of grand winners. This country is quickly becoming a force to be reckoned with uh, as they now have the grand winner titles to match their world, champion, their world championships and continental titles in fighting, and they have amassed quite a lot of them in the recent year. In the only other division that had a clean sweep this year, Kakuro Nishiyama continues his dominance in the male kata division. Having only lost four total matches within the past two years, it is no surprise that he would secure his third consecutive grand winner. As anyone who's followed the Premier League, he, he was one of the first to secure his status after the third event and the only athlete that was so far ahead of everyone else in the division. He didn't even need to show up for Casablanca. Uh, but he did anyway to ensure it, 
or to make it certain that he was a top athlete in this division. And the only besmirch on his record currently is the fact that he didn't win the world championships. I'm sure that that's what's fueling him on his run that he's currently on going into next year to finally win uh, the world title. And that concludes the 2024 Karate One Premier League season. I would like to note that this year's season ended way earlier than anyone expected, and I hope that this year is an anomaly and does not become the norm. As we saw in some instances, injury took a top con uh, contender out, and with the season being so short as far as timeline, this is something that affected the outcome. I understand that with the introduction of the Team World Championships uh, that the schedule would change somewhat, but... For it all to be over with in May is something that really needs to change, particularly from a spectator perspective, right? I think that they can work in the Series A, Youth League, and the Premier League to work without having to jam one of them into a five-month window. We will all have to wait and see. I want to thank all of you for joining me for another episode of The Traditional Way, and I hope that you all continue to support this show and the rest of the Martial Arts Internet Network. Until next time, guys.